All righty. Hey, welcome to the uh, Hurley Investments Financial Services Commentary. It is Tuesday, May 17th. Um, I'm glad I'm here with you today, and, I, and I'm going to apologize. I know last week nothing ever came out, just got busy. In fact, in all honesty, I am probably only going to have two more of these and then I'm uh, and then I'm going to take a summer hiatus. Doesn't mean I might not put stuff out on the website, but uh, I've got a very busy summer through June and July. So uh, I have gone to doing a little bit smaller, shorter weekly recaps for 15 minutes or not. So the short answer is um, check the websites. Everything's going to be on the website, so it'll be easier for me to navigate through my. Uh, through my summer here. With that said, I want to spend a little bit of time with you and understanding on why you guys are here and the benefits that that you have. I had a, a potential new client basically tell me, Kevin, what are my choices in the stock market? Because everything I looks at seems to be the same. And and he's right. I mean in plain English, everything you have by a professional stock market or stockbroker or a, a a registered investment advisor so I'm gonna just let I'm gonna go ahead and type some of this in here everything is the same from a broker to a registered investment advisor to a uh, financial planner. Really quickly, why is everything the same? Or what do all these guys do that's the same? Dan, uh, Dan don't comment. But what do these guys all do that's the same? <laughs> Lose you money, okay. <laughs> kind of, but... But yeah, I mean, the short answer is no one in the last 20 years has retired off one of these jokers. They don't call her. You know what, what they do? They put you into a financial planning software. And it's funny because no matter what financial planning software they give you, the answer is always the same. 60% equities, 40% bonds. There you go. And then they all invest your money and in their minds the job is done. They don't look at it. They're not invested themselves in it. They literally put you in some garbage and their job's done. When it doesn't work, what is their answer? Don't worry. You're invested for the long term. And it's funny because you can be 30, 40, 50, you could be 60 years old with five years till retirement and these idiots are going to tell you the same answer. Don't worry, it's invested for the long term. Don't worry, it's going to come back next year. Don't worry, it's going to average out to be in your favor. Averages are just averages. Just because the market average is a 7.75%, that does not mean you are going to make 7.75% on average in your life in the stock market. In fact, the short answer is, in the last 20 years, you haven't made anything. 
In the last 20 years, there's been nothing to make in the stock market. Yes, it's up, but when you take out some fees and look through 12, 12 and a half years of going sideways, there is nothing to have been made. When you go through a drop in 2008 that it loses half the value, you're toast. So you guys have made a decision. You want to do something different. Out of curiosity, how does it feel doing something different? How does it feel to do something different? Very good if it works, but if it doesn't. Okay, Abraham. Abraham, that is the most honest answer I could, could, could ask of you. But Abraham, what is your alternative? What's your alternative? What's your alternative? Rolling Stones, there you go. There is no alternative. I hope you understand that meaning when it works, nothing works 100% of the time. There are times when your accounts are going to be down because you pay for a portion of the insurance that goes through time decay. Meaning it doesn't work doesn't mean there are not times that your account value can't be down. But there is a plan in place other than sit and hope. You have options or choices to do things to better your position and your plan. It always works. And it's always worked for 20 years collar trading. Are there years that it doesn't beat the S&P 500? Yes. But it sure as hell beats um, any asset allocation model. And really, if when it doesn't beat, it's picking up two, three, four, five hundred 500 shares. I've got some people in Apple that I've been able to add some shares to, and lower the cost, it's not Apple, Disney. I've got some new clients that I've picked up where yes, it has been a rather tough period of time. Can I have you hold on for a quick second, please? Never, never got to it. Um, so yes, there are some periods of time where, where it is tough, it is hard. Where if you don't beat the S&P, at least you're lowering your cost basis. At least you're possibly picking up shares. And as, as I was saying, um, before I got distracted there, there are some people I've picked up at the beginning of the year that, um, that are down. But we are not nearly as down as the positions would be if they were by themselves. And we're right now at a great opportunity to hopefully pick up some more shares. I'm ecstatic that Baidu is having such a bad opportunity. I got pissed off when Baidu went up $8.80 yesterday. Good thing it's seeing its resistance. It probably won't go above it. Baidu really should probably test $150. You know what's awesome about what we're doing? You are learning to be a cheerleader as stocks go down and as they go up. Whereas your alternative... Your other opportunity is to hope that things turn around. In an asset allocation model, were you guys ever excited or cheering for the market to go down? Have you guys ever been cheering for the market to go down? And some of the other things that you've been 
that you've had people investing for you or your other choices? If not, then the simple numbers tell you whether it's going to work or not. Because if you can only make money as things go up, you've got a one out of three chance of being profitable and the odds are stacked against you where you will lose money for the rest of your life. I hope that what you guys understand and what the education is giving to you is the ability to make choices. And those choices are to separate yourself from an asset allocation model, which was never intended to work in the first place, which has always been based fundamentally wrong on averages, which will never make money in a low interest rate environment. And we all know that the United States has a significant tumble in its future. A significant tumble in its future. It's going to look scary. It's going to be a, a pisser when things catch up to us. No idea when that's going to be. But I do know it's going to suck and it's going to suck bad. It'll not be anything that we're going to like to be in. So, with that said, <laughs> have I depressed anybody? Based on poor earnings or based on external events? Maude, let's, I'm going to start off with both of those. Let's talk about earnings. Our stock market has had six quarters, quarter over quarter, negative growth from the previous year. We've had three, four, I think we've had four years where we have not grown the S&P year over year. Is it partially based on earnings? You better believe it. Is it based on external events? Well, with the amount of debt, we've really put ourselves in a position where we've handcuffed the Federal uh, Open Market Committee because they can't afford to raise rates. By raising rates and using one of the tools that they've used in the process, has done nothing but given them one less arrow in their quiver to fight the inflation that we're coming up against because we can't afford to pay more interest on the future debt that we're going to have to roll our past debt into. We're weakening the dollar doing what the Fed has done, which really puts us close to losing our reserve currency status, and they're already creating other baskets of reserve currencies so that the U.S. doesn't have our number one economic advantage to everyone else in the world, which has been being the reserve currency and not having to pay all the transaction fees in and out of currencies. Um, we already have had cities, municipalities, counties go bankrupt by their, their poor budgeting. There, there's all kinds of things all across the board, Mod, that show uh, some of the difficulty or some of the problems that the United States will have as we pay the piper. So you can't really pinpoint it to one thing. So yes, we are in the perfect storm, and we all know how the perfect storm movie ended, right? They all drowned and died. <laughs> Thank goodness we know how to float in a horrible market. We are collared. In fact, the neat thing is, if we have another 2008, what is the only thing we have to do 
and 2008 to protect our portfolios. What's the only thing we have to do to protect our portfolios? Make sure we have long puts or just add a second set of long puts. If you want to make money, you add a second set of long puts. What's the only thing we have to do to make money day in and day out in a ridiculous four to 600 point swinging stock market? What's the only thing we have to do to make money day in and day out in a ridiculous 100 point swinging stock market? What's our income strategy? when it hits the fan. Ooh, I got you guys there, huh? What's our income strategy when it hits the fan? Guys don't know. Oh no. Um, it's a strangle straddle. When you start seeing four 600 point swings in the stock market, you need to get on your strangle straddle. I'm taking a quick look to see if I can find some of what I, I had in the past. Yeah, pretty amazing. What do you do when it really hits the fan when you go through a 2008? Yes, I was trying to help out a different organization at that time, but it's only because Jeffrey hadn't created his, uh, his stuff yet. That SanDisk. That SanDisk. Yeah, I can bring up so many of these type of, of opportunities to show you guys where you get in on the first, you go through a weekend or 28th, get out on the first three days, and you're just booking profit after profit after profit. And I can show it over and over, an eight-day trade, a 10-day trade, um, oh my gosh, it's not working. Hey, I added a, a short position. We're now profitable. I've got them over and over and over again where I can show you daily these trades that literally booked money over and over and over again. It's ridiculous how easy it is when we're in a 2008. It'll be an amazing situation where, again, you're going to have fabulous opportunities in the stock market. All right. Let's see here. What's happening this week? Well, kind of, kind of interesting because the best thing to say, good news is bad news and bad news is good news. Um, it was funny because I had someone that said, my goodness, should we tear off our puts yesterday? And I said, well, have you not learned what's happened the last three weeks? We've got a great Monday and we give it all back the next day. <laughs> but this time it's different. Well, it might be. But we don't know yet, so I'm keeping mine on. Poor son of a gun, tore is off. No crossovers, no nothing. He took a pounding today. And the funny thing is, when the stock market was only down 60, his comment was, well, 
I've already lost as much as I'm going to lose, so I'm okay. Then the stock market went down 185 today. Dumb. Not smart. Not smart, but again, this is where we get frustrated with the stock market. And the funny thing is, and Abraham, if I can pick on you just a little bit, well, it's very good if it works. Well, it works. Are there user errors at times? Of course there are. We're not ever perfect. We're not ever perfect. But it works, and it works very well. In fact, it works as long as we don't screw it up. <laughs> Today, industrial production was fabulous. It really, for those of you that maybe uh, haven't seen it yet, I'm doing a little 10 or 15 minute week, weekly week recap, primarily for my clientele base. But uh, the short answer is I am posting it online. Um, I have hope for the back end of the year because of what's happening right now. Well, Kevin, what's happening right now? We're seeing uh, building permits and housing starts be right in line, if not a little bit better. We're seeing a tick up in inflation. Capacity utilization, industrial production were higher and better than expected. I think we'll probably run through a sell in May and go away, stumble through summer, have a pretty wicked sell off of about 16% just going a little bit more to the downside than we've had last year, and we'll make our profits in the last month or two. In fact, revenues and returns will probably be made the end of this year around, oh, I'd probably say, geez, I'd expect it to occur probably uh, November, December again like last year. Um, last year, in all honesty, my big winners were not Apple, were not Disney, we're not Visa, but I was able to live through everything, and I made my profits on one stock that ran, and that was Baidu, because I'd added shares twice as it fell down. One run up from Baidu at the end of the year helped me beat the S&P 500. Sorry about that. It looks like I lost, uh, I lost a little bit of uh, audio. One stock last year helped me beat the S&P 500 through... Uh, 90% of the portfolios that I manage. And it all occurred November through December. I would expect that again this year. World market's going to end this week. Again, we've gone through three weeks of down, four weeks on the, the NASDAQ. Uh, I'm just following the trend. I think we're going to be down again. I don't see a whole lot that moves us higher. So I'm going to run off to Denver this week. <laughs> I'm going to make a quick trip out to Denver, but I'm expecting us to go down lower. The Dow, uh, very interesting. Uh, if you guys go back a couple weeks, uh, I think it was actually last week. Last week I did the live trading. And I had a gentleman that told me two weeks ago, well, if I say so, the, the Dow is, is negative. It's bearish. And the funny thing is, it probably occurred right about here. And the comment was, well, it's not really bearish. I mean, you're just, you're just giving us the standard, I'm going to scare you crap. But we had a technical crossover that was to the bearish side. We had a technical crossover that was sitting right there. It was technically not bullish because you didn't have all three. And politely I sat there and I said, well, how did I say it? I didn't want to take offense to it, but I really sat there and thought, you, you need to look at what's in front of your face. We were bearish. No two ways about it. We were bearish. Because we didn't have our three technical crossovers. So when it's bearish, I'm not looking at putting a whole bunch of bullish trades on. We went to some bearish trades, and boy, they worked out quite nicely. Did a 10-contract bearish trade on Baidu, and in three days, I was able to pick up $0.32 cents out of the maximum 50 on a bear call. We're bearish. 
again the comment was well if you say so well I don't say so the technical say so they don't lie take what's given right in front of your face don't try to outguess the market S&P mirrors the the uh, the Dow obviously taking a quick peek I thought it was even a little bit easier to see but I guess not and the NASDAQ is a approaching a correction, 10% correction territory. Now, if I was to ask you guys, has this been a pretty brutal month? Has this been a brutal, worrisome month for you guys, the month of May? As I look at some things that occurred, I've kind of gone, ugh, kind of a pretty ugly month of May. Do you guys feel the same or not? Give me a yes, no, maybe so. Do you guys feel the same or not? Definitely we've been more bearish. In fact, I'll tell you, I thought it's been an ugly month. And I've had some people tell me, oh, Kevin, it's been brutal. It's been ugly. Well, in all honesty, we had an up day, but it opened up at that 17800 It's down a percent. I can go ahead and use that same line. And bring it into the S&P, probably only down a percent so far, maybe a percent in a bit. So, um, so the short answer is, it's only been down a percent. Please don't overreact too much on what's going on and why on what's going on and why. All righty. Taking a peek here. Looks like I don't have really good audio today. I lost it. I apologize for that. I'm still saying the S&P is going to end May. Trying to help my internet here just a little bit. Okay. Um, I still think we'll be down in May, 2.5%. Haven't changed my expectations. Earnings for this week, uh, it's really a retail earnings, but tomorrow's Cisco. Um, Cisco, Salesforce, CRM, and Target will be possible movers in our stock market. Kind of a pisser that Home Depot today has a, for lack of a better term, and I haven't verified it yet, but a CEO that's an idiot that, if I understood right, has said that they've probably had their best quarter of the year uh, this last quarter. Which, you know, why not just shoot yourself in the foot right out of the gates? Awfully stupid for someone like that to say that. Um, Thursday, Walmart will be the market mover. And Friday will be deer. And I would obviously don't expect a whole lot out of deer. Not a whole lot by way of economic reports, but the Fed minutes will create some volatility. Internationally, not a whole lot going on. Um, Sunday's Japan's merchandise trade is going to really move our stock market over the weekend. How am I looking to trade? I haven't taken off the callers from earnings session. Don't forget, we have options expiration on Friday. And I feel like I need to sell some more premium. To sell premium... I will short puts against 
long putts. Can't spell there. And roll covered calls or add new covered calls as volatility has picked up. Now I say that and let me show you something really quickly here. Perception is, is kind of everything. Volatility has picked up, but it's not it's not nearly as high as it's been in January and February. So I'm looking at volatility run up to that 1819 level, the 200 day. And then I'll worry about what happens with volatility. I do have a personal trade on. Got in for $1.68. It's a VIX bull call. It's a September 2028 bull call on, on, uh, on the VIX. I could get out now at $1.85. I think I've got my target to get out at $1.90. Gets up to that 16, a little bit higher. Didn't get out today, but I was close. Gets a little bit higher to that 16. And a bull call way out in time, out in September, knowing we had the Gregzik, knowing we had some issues coming up this summer, um, I felt I could at least make my 20% on it. And I'm pretty close. Maybe I'll only make 15, but I'm there. Volatility is not spiking through the roof, but it is definitely more volatile. Guys, what questions do you have? What questions can I answer for you to try to help you out? Um, I don't know, a question was brought to me earlier. Would I, deploy, would I deploy more money anywhere at this time? No, I definitely would not be deploying money right now, um, only because there's uncertainty in the market, and I don't think we've hit a bottom or a top. So I'm not comfortable in deploying more money at this time into an uncertain market. Maude, question on Biden. Are you worried the Chinese government said they wanted to take a stake in it? No. In fact, the best thing that can happen is the Chinese government takes a stake in it because they'll artificially inflate their numbers. And, man, you could watch Baidu go all the way back up to the 770s where they had a 10-for-1 split. The government involved with Baidu and taking a stake in it just means that they got all the government backing to do whatever the heck they want to, and it's, it would be a huge stimulus, stimulus for Baidu. Um, now, it hasn't gone down here recently because the government wanted to take a stake in it. It's gone down because of, well, a pretty non, it's a stupid reason that someone uh, died from cancer that had cancer. That's the basis, basis and the, the simplest way to put it. Now, yes, they did use Baidu and the search engine to try to find some alternative uh, medicines to help them out. But the fact of the matter is someone that had cancer and had it really bad died from cancer, and it's not Baidu's fault that when they went to an alternative medicine source that they found using the search engine and it didn't help them live, it, it's not Baidu's fault that that happened. So again, this should be a buying opportunity for Baidu. Should be. Uh, we always will find out after the fact, right? Any other questions? I heard you looked for equities with 10% movement between earnings. That is correct, Abraham. 
on fundamentally sound companies. How do you filter for those? Is this an IV issue of interest? Okay, so Abraham, I don't use a screener. I don't use a scanner. How do I really do it? I take a look at what's in the news. I take a look at what I've heard from Bloomberg and CNBC and Fox News. And literally, I just write down in my planner a list of some of the stocks that come up, some of the stocks I've never heard of. And then I do nothing more than bring up a chart. I bring up a chart, most likely the one on my trading platform of Options House, click on their earnings so it marks the earnings and dividends for me, and I see how they move between the earnings or dividends. Um, most of my research is done, Abraham, over Christmas. That's when I spend my time really looking at stocks and positions. So, no, I, I don't use the stock screener. Um, I just, as I hear things throughout the week, I write down the ticker symbols. And then once a month, I usually will will go through and take a look at movement for earnings. And I might even do some fundamentals on them. But for the most part, the stocks that I'm in for the year, uh, I'm in for the year already because I did my research on them over Christmas. Good question. Really good question. Are there any other questions? What is your position on Calm? I don't have a pos uh, an opinion on it. <laughs> um, I have seen it a couple different times, but it's never interested me to trade it as of yet. So I've looked at them. I just... I have not been into the foods at all, Del Monte, um, any of them, because I feel, well, it's the same reason I'm not into commodities. I feel that the bet is on the weather. Well, Kevin, that's oversimplifying it because they do chickens or they do eggs or they do pork. And I understand all that. What I understand is that I don't understand the, the food industry. And so much of it seems to be bet on the weather. I don't choose to play any food stocks per se because I'm not going to try to outguess the weather. It, that just seems ridiculous to me. There, there's some good movement on it. Obviously, as I look at a chart, it would be an, a nice collar trade. Big drops down and up. Um, a pretty easy to read chart. And also, as you look at where it's at right now, it doesn't like to stay... Uh, oversold and you're right at the bottom, this would probably be a pretty good entry point to, to at least get a, a small or a short-term bounce, but it's, don't expect it to go much over $51. You're also getting your death cross where you have your 50-day crossing below, so you would expect roughly a 7% drop down to the downside from here uh, on it as well. And that kind of lines up, in all honesty, that 7% drop lines up close to that $44, $45 mark. So there's a short pull it up, look at it, kind of fly by night, <laughs> fly by the seat of my pants, Abraham. But, but yes, I have looked at it in the past. I just haven't felt comfortable with it because of, of my opinion on, on what moves the food industry. And this is the food, whether it be uh, animals or or uh, vegetables or that kind of stuff. All right, are there any other questions? Any concerns over Disney about any concern? No, in fact, Maude, I've put a lot of information here of what I've been reading that has some numbers to it. Um, take a peek at some of the links that I have for Disney. Um, my belief is Disney is one, one simple, uh, one simple bounce in ESPN from being up 20%, basically, is what my thought on Disney is. Yellen is correct on inflation. Um, I think Yellen uses inflation 
to, to her advantage either way that she wants to. It's not enough or it's too much. Um, I don't know if Yellen is correct on inflation or not. I just know that, that I've seen her flip-flop on using inflation as her excuse to do or to not to do anything. So um, I think it's, again, I think it's what she uses to to justify her decision or to just, yeah, to justify her decision no matter which way she leans. I'm not sure I see how data dependent she, she seems to want to be data dependent, but she's far from being data dependent. Just a little thought process there. Um, my perception of inflation is much higher than what is announced. Well, yes, and it should be because we have a, a higher, in all honesty, we have a higher cost of, uh, of energy. I think energy rules inflation. Only reason why inflation seemed to be going down had nothing to do with anything other than energy. And because of everything other than energy, it's, uh, you know, it's nothing but a thing, right? <laughs> I think it also is much higher, but I think, unfortunately, since it's just energy, um, it's almost considered to be not that big of a deal. All right, guys, hey, I want to appreciate having you here today. I'm going to leave on you just a little bit early. Got to run off to a 6 o'clocker, but guys, I appreciate you being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be on Tuesday as well. The week after will be on Tuesday after the uh, Memorial Day. And then I think I'm going to be off from uh, June and July. Doesn't mean I won't have stuff still posted for you. Um, I'm just running into being having a really busy summer for the first time in a while. Guys, I appreciate your questions and your comments. It's always my pleasure to be here with you. Please don't hesitate to... Uh, to zip me an email, you could do that at Kay Hurley at Hurley Investments, or don't forget you can always um, you can always just check the websites and be able to use. So I get it back up to it. There we go. You're always welcome to uh, search my two websites. You can go to customer service or support at Hurley Investments, and that will come off to me. Guys, I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful evening, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye-bye, y'all.